We're back. We're live. This is Think Tech. I'm Jay Fidel. We're talking about uh, Code Green, uh, which is Howard Wiggs' show at 3 uh, p.m., 3 o'clock rock every Monday. Howard is going to be here shortly, so we're going to do a tag team here. Okay, and our special guest is Matt Goyke. He's the principal of Green Sand Architecture and Sustainability. That's a plus mm -hmm. sign. Correct. Yeah. So, hi. Welcome to the show, Matt. Thank you. Thank you. Good to be here. So, Keska say green sand architecture. What is that? Yeah. Green sand? Green Archi sand, yeah. I never saw green sand. Yeah. What is that? Well, um, it, it was named after the green sand beach on the big island of Hawaii. Mm. Um, that particular beach is made out of a mineral uh, olivine that is uh, brought up from the lava flows in certain parts of the uh, island and over time the waves have worked it and worked it and so we have that beautiful green sand beach. Um, that's one of the first places that Rhonda and I, when, I came, when we came to the islands, 20... She's your wife and, and co-architect? Yeah, partner, yes. Um, uh, she is not an architect, she is uh, an environmental consultant. Mm, perfect. Um, so the two of us together form green sand. Why? Yeah. Well, we thought um, that, one, there was a need, uh, there was a passion on our side for um, doing green architecture, doing sustainable architecture, impacting the environment in, in whatever ways that we can, um, one project at a time, one home at a time. Um, and so that's, you know, we kind of, when we formed the firm, we, we put our two interests together and specialties, and it has worked out uh, pretty well so far. Are you buzzing with business? We are, we are, doing, we are doing well, yeah, yes, we are. We're very busy. Um, and happily so, and always looking for more work, though. <laughs> Where, where's your office? Actually, we are working uh, out of Kailua now. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have an office right in this building here for a while, um, but we uh, downsized a little bit uh, so that I can do more design. So I am now uh, more hands-on meeting with the clients directly and designing and then handing it off to folks, whereas mm -hmm. before I was overseeing and designing part-time and so mm -hmm. wanted to get kind of back to uh, um, you know, the things that I love, yeah. really love to do, Good meeting thing. with clients, talking with people about architecture. Shaping plans together. Yes, yeah. very much so, very much so. So we're calling this show Shades of Green, Shades of Green Architecture. Correct. Keska say shades of green architecture. That's not so, olivine anymore. That's something else. Right? Yeah, that's um, so. You know, we we run into a lot of people and clients and projects out there, and you know, not everyone can be super deep green, um, but every little bit helps. So that's what we talk about: shades of green. There's a there's a wide variety of projects and types of things that people are interested in and how they implement them and all of them can can have some form of green on them. I bet there are three distinct shades of green. Why well, do I feel that way? Well, today we're talking about uh, there's a there's many more shades of green, but today we're going to talk about three projects and how those different projects are green uh, in different ways. So, historic renovation, luxury off the grid, yes, and functional renovation. Let's, let's start at the top of the list. Okay. Historical renovation. So historical renovation. Um, this is a project in uh, Manoa. And, um, you know, the, the decision to renovate a house in itself is a very green decision because you're, you're diverting things away from the landfill. You're not expending a lot of... Uh, energy for shipping more materials over here and so there's a lot of nice qualities about that in this particular instant where we're not only preserving some materials it happens to be an historic home that we're preserving um here's so a, here's, is this the very home yeah this is this is the home this is the completed home well that's really nice um so you know you can you can see it it obviously it, uh, this is a circa 1920 home built in manoa looks like a gingerbread cottage it looks like a gingerbread cottage exactly and you know it was subject to a lot of uh, ill-conceived um, renovations over the years as many homes are sure and so we wanted to uh, you know bring it back to its uh, former glory and also modernize it to meet the new lifestyle of the current owners so uh, before we get into the you know energy and sustainability aspects um, did you have to do a lot of um, 
work to remove the changes that had been made, you know, uh, ill-advised changes that had been made over the years? We did. We did. We had to, um, we basically demoed all of that out. And uh, again, in, in talking about sustainability, those materials that were demoed, um, we tried to recycle them as much as we could. Um, the second, we tried to reuse them and repurpose them, not on this particular project, but we worked with uh, Reuse Hawaii. And oh, so, sure, we, yeah. know, we know Reuse Hawaii. Yeah, That's yeah, good friends with Quinn and known him for a long time. But we, we try to get every project, every client we have, commercial or otherwise, um, try to send it through Reuse Hawaii. And that's the right way. Yes. So doing it with reused materials yes. is the right way, to, philosophically yes. and, and, and um, in a larger picture for the right. environment. Right. So, uh, okay, now let's get to the energy part. What did you do in this house to make it more energy efficient so, and, and independent? Yeah, so this, this house um, uh, really came up in, in two ways. Uh, it was the insulation um, and then the PVs that they are just now going to put on to I the house. I don't see any PVs. No, they're not on the house right now. Um, this is one of the things that uh, there's always been, there, there, there continues to be increases in the technology. And uh, when we first did this project, the most available, most uh, efficient panel was like 230 watts per panel. But now they're up over 300. And so that made this putting panels on this particular house because of its orientation and its availability to sunlight and things of that nature. Is this in the neighborhood where it rains? Yes, this is in Manoa. Mm. Um, so uh, it now becomes more economically feasible, so they are going to put that on there. Um, and That's the entire house... a substantial house, increase in efficiency. It is. Between 230 and 300. 230, 250, I mean, up to about 300 like now. Yeah. 20% increase. Yeah, so those are... Those are those are important, you know, that, that moves your, if you had 100 panels on your house, so now all of a sudden you only have to buy 80, so. And you don't want to spend the whole roof on panels, you want to retain the architectural aesthetic. Right, um, we are just going to put it on that kind of uh, dormered flat roof portion, and the, because the other side is facing the wrong way, and it's very steep. Mm -hmm. So you can't get away with that. Uh, so you lose efficiency. Yeah, you, you lose efficiency on that, yeah, too. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so um, panels, new panels. New panels. 300 panels. Um, some of the energy efficiencies that we're, we're doing, it's all LED lighting. Uh, we chose to use the um, uh, tankless water heaters, the gas, because they have gas in that neighborhood, uh, gas oven and stove, um, gas barbecue well, in the why back. Do you, why do you like gas? Um, it's not necessarily that I like gas, but it reduces the electrical energy load um, more so than whether I like a certain energy source over another right. energy source. Um, and then um, it's insulation. It's to cook with gas, it's, too. Uh, apparently. I'm not, uh, <laughs> that type of, uh, is lost on my palate, let's say. <laughs> whether it's electric or induction or gas. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so uh, insulation was uh, the next uh, big thing, and uh, the entire house was foam insulated. Uh, so we had to we had to take this down, all take it down to its very structure, and uh, we insulated the floor, the walls, and then the roof. Makes a big difference, doesn't it? It makes a big difference. What's the, the high tech insulation you use now? It's the we're we're using um, well just the foam insulation. It's it's your basic closed cell. <laughs> foam that is sprayed on um, and uh, comes in uh, it's all about it's all about the same it depends on the insta installer on, on how well it's done mm -hmm, and how well mm -hmm, it covers yeah. and, and that's really worth mentioning is that it's not only that you want to design it so that theoretically it will be more efficient you want to get a contractor who is skilled to put it in the right way that's right otherwise you're losing some of that theoretical advantage that's right. Actually, for uh, if you don't use foam, uh, if you're using regular bat insulation, um, there are different levels, grade levels of installation, and we always specify a grade one, um, which which takes a little more skill. You have to be out there watching it. You have to put insulation around and behind pipes. You just mm -hmm. can't put it on the side, so mm -hmm. there's no gaps. Mm -hmm. It has to touch all six sides of the cavity. I mean, there's there's a lot of things that go into installing insulation proper, properly. Um, 
We're, <clears throat> we're going to have time, I think, uh, b before we take our break to talk about getting off grid. And we have a, a picture that this yes. also looks like a, 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 a gingerbread cottage, another yes. kind of gingerbread this cottage. This is kind of, uh, which kind of leads into, well, all of our projects, um, that being green and being completely off the grid you don't have to live in a yurt or a cottage <laughs> like this or, you know. It's just a before picture of the You can, you can shower daily. Picture. You know, it doesn't have to be. <laughs> Good. It's just a before <laughs> picture of the after picture that we just saw. That's just a picture that we found and okay. for yeah, illustrative after. purposes. Okay, yes. all right. <laughs> so what did you do for that? Just to, to get it off grid, to, um, you know, allow yeah, so regular living there and so forth? I guess if we can move into the next project, which is Pakamakani Farm. Oh, this is a, this is a uh, image of the uh, historical renovation. Yeah, beautiful. Um, and, and, you know, so that one of the, you know, from a design point of view, this doesn't have to really do with energy so much, but the homes of that era were very compartmentalized. You had a living room, you had a front room, parlor, yeah. dining room, kitchen. So one of the things was to uh, make it more open, but still retain that quality of having these separate rooms. And it looks like you did And that. that's what we did through a series of archways that are still of the period. Um, uh, so it, it turned out very nice. They were very happy. Um, matching the material uh -huh. on the exterior uh -huh. was, uh, was difficult, finding that, uh, that combed siding. Um, was, so, it was well, pretty bit of a challenge. You said it was a historic house. Does yeah. that mean it was uh, designated as a historic house? It, it isn't designated yet. They are in the process of getting it designated now. Um, so they should find out um, actually the end of November. If they want to be faithful and, or rather get the designation, um, they may have to do more work on it, no? Uh, no, we're uh, actually, we're, they, they've gone through all the reviews. It's just a matter of getting it officially getting approved. Getting yeah. yeah, good. Yeah. Well, that's really a feather in the owner's cap, that he not yes. only renovated it for efficiency, but, um, but to retain yeah, the Yeah, they saw quality. the beauty in it. They saw the value in it, um, especially being in Manoa, you know, saving these, you know, these really iconic structures from that, that time period. Mm -hmm. You know, that's important. Now, not everything, you know, should be saved, but in this instance, it made sense. And the structure was still solid. It wasn't termite ridden. Did you have to do anything or did you do anything else like, um, you know, with uh, electronics to control the use of power in the house as renovated? No, that, that's um, not something that we really got into on, on this house, no. Um, this was uh, really just the, the PV, the insulation, the choice of water heaters. So this is a, a project, and a material-wise, since we wanted to be true to that time period, um, you know, we weren't necessarily selecting recycled materials or recyclable materials and things like that. So this is one of those shades of green, where it's a greenhouse because we restored it and you know diverted things from the landfill, um, but it's not deep, deep, deep green. Okay. So we're, we're going to take a, a short break. I see Howard in our gallery. Hi, Howard. I want to take a short break. Uh, this is uh, Matt Goyke. He's an architect with uh, Green Sand Architecture plus, with an ad sign, sustainability, <laughs> talking about three different kinds of projects. We covered one, and we're moving into this. Howard can move into the second one. We'll take a short break here on Code Green. Aloha everyone, I hope you've been watching Think Tech Hawaii, but I'm here to invite you to watch me on Viva Hawaii every Monday at 3 p.m. I'm waiting for you. Mahalo. Hello, this is Martin Despang. I want to get you get excited about my new show, which is Humane Architecture for Hawaii and Beyond. We're going to broadcast on Tuesdays, 5 p.m. here on uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Hello, I'm Marianne Sasaki. Welcome to Think Tech Hawaii, where some of the most interesting conversations in Honolulu go on. I have a show on Wednesdays from 1 to 2 called Life in the Law, where we discuss legal issues, politics, governmental topics, and a whole host of issues. I hope you'll join me. 
Aloha, I'm Carl Campagna. I hope you please visit us this summer. It's a wonderful summer. It's actually a cooler summer than we're used to. But I hope that you come back and visit us and watch our show, Education, Movers, Shakers, and Reformers, here on Think Tech Hawaii. It's at noon every Wednesday. See you then. Aloha, I'm Kirsten Baumgart-Turner, host of Sustainable Hawaii. We live stream every Tuesday from noon to 12.30. You get a chance to hear what people are doing about sustainability in Hawaii and what the issues are impacting all of us in all the islands. Join us, please. Hi, I'm Chris Leatham here with Think Tech Hawaii, and I invite you to watch my show, The Economy and You, each Wednesday at 3 o'clock um, here in Hawaii on OC16. We look forward to seeing you. Aloha. Greetings, this is no longer Jay Fidel, this is Howard Wig. humble apologies, a spooky spirit did something to my memory <laughs> and I had to dash over here and Uncle Jay filled in for me, thank you very much, Jay. And so Matt, before we got so rudely interrupted, we want to talk now about the PK... PKM Farm, PKM Farm. Paka Makani, it means mm -hmm. uh, touched by the wind. Mm -hmm. Uh, and this is, um, in following along with the idea of the shades of green, this is a, uh, uh, would be considered a dark green mm -hmm. project. Mm -hmm. It's uh, completely off the grid, uh, located in the North Kohala area uh, near Javi. Um, it's on a 20-acre site. Uh, it has a barn, a farm dwelling, and um, uh, they catch their own water. They treat their own water. Uh, and they collect all their energy. Mm -hmm. um, in addition to that, uh, they also uh, were definitely interested in uh, uh, as many um, green materials and also they were very interested in um, materials that were uh, of low toxicity. Um, mm -hmm. The Living Building Challenge is an organization yes. out of uh, um, Portland and the Pacific Northwest area. And it's known as being tremendously difficult, as I understand. It is, yeah, it is. Yeah. And this project started off that, and we mm -hmm. got through the design development phase, but uh, during uh, bidding, it, um, you know, we, we dropped that, and not only, we, we only got uh, platinum, lead platinum for that the house, is, <laughs> which that. is also difficult, but. There's um, not a whole lot of lead platinum buildings in the entire U United States of America, is that is that's that correct? Difficult? Yeah, yeah, that's correct. And um, and so we 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 got it for this particular mm -hmm. project, mm -hmm. and it was uh, more difficult for this project for a couple of reasons. Uh, one, the lead program. Uh, this isn't really the discussion for this mm -hmm. this particular, um, but the lead program likes to promote inner city urban infill mm -hmm, projects. Mm -hmm. And this is off on the big yeah, island yeah, in farmland, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. So we didn't get a lot of points for that, or we yeah, weren't able it, to it, capture a lot of points. It's not bicycle friendly, it's not on a bus route. Yes, it's yes. It's not within two, one mile of a shopping center. Yeah, none of, like none of those yeah, things yeah, uh, yeah. were there. And then in addition to that, there's, there's such a thing as a, um, a, a scale for the size of your dwelling. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the lead, again, likes to promote smaller, more mm -hmm, compact mm -hmm. uh, homes. This is a luxury home, uh, you know, a two-bedroom, 3,600-square-foot two-bedroom. And so that, that uh, raises our scale higher. Um, so with that being said, some of the, um, uh, this project was off the grid. Uh, we looked at many different um, options let's say mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and the two prominent ones was uh were uh, wind turbines mm -hmm. this particular the reason why it's called uh pakamakani touched by the wind is that this is in a certain area of the island of hawaii that gets constant wind yeah yeah uh and it's it's actually when you're out there it's tiring it's oppressive mm -hmm, i mean mm -hmm. when you're out there working in it uh and so uh, we looked at that as a, that was a viable option. However, the wind power does take a little more um, maintenance. Mm -hmm. It's a little noisier. It does have some sound associated with it. And that was something that they were particularly concerned about. One, mm -hmm. the maintenance, and two, 
they didn't want a lot of noise or sound coming their, from their things. Um, even so much as that we have the energy room and the photovoltaics and the water collection system is on the barn, which is, mm. you know, 400 feet, 500 feet yeah. away and from the none dwelling. none of those are very noisy. To put my and none of those are yeah, very noisy, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah. So, you know, there's a little bit of hum from the electronics and the inverters, mm -hmm. but not much. But still, we wanted them distant. So uh, this project has 99 230-watt uh, panels on it. Um, we have oh, yeah. six um, 8,000 kilovolt um, inverters, two charge controllers, uh, 48 uh, deep cycle batteries. Uh, and this how, how big are each one of the batteries? Like a filing cabinet or something? No, they're not that big. Mm -hmm. uh, they are about um, two and a half feet tall, mm -hmm. uh, about 12 inches, okay. by maybe about two feet deep. And we have them outside of the barn in a, in a cabinet. Uh, we have them uh, self uh, filling for water purposes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we have a uh, hydrogen sensor inside to help just in case things uh, build up in there. We know that uh, we need to open things up a little bit more. If, than if there's a buildup of hydrogen, we're looking at explosive or fire? Potentially, or, yeah. potentially, yeah. Mm -hmm. If there's a spark of some sort, there, mm -hmm. there's a potential for it. Um, it this, this particular enclosure is vented, but yeah. if we, we have never gotten a, uh, an indication for it, but if we did, we would just open up the tops of it and just let it air out real quick. Mm -hmm. But we haven't good, had that. Good to have that monitor there, yeah. Yes, it yeah. is very good. And that's something, you know, uh, for, for homes, you know, when we're designing, we think mm -hmm. about where we're putting these, how close, where the wind is blowing. We don't want that gas to accumulate anywhere and especially to get into the home in any way. Mm, absolutely. So yeah. we, we think about those things and how it's sited and, and where it is. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, in terms of energy efficiency, uh, we have, uh, they have uh, only one air conditioner. Um, it's a, a split system. They have it for the master bedroom and the only room, and that is used occasionally. They really don't use it too often just mm -hmm. because there's enough insulation and ventilation to keep the, uh, the place cool. Um, but the one room that gets a lot of air conditioning is the computer room. Mm -hmm. It's a small three by six room where everything home runs to, and that gets air conditioning. Mm -hmm. um, now, now, just regarding the computer room on a scale about 10,000 times larger than that, you have the Silicon Valley data centers, uh, Google, Microsoft, and so forth. Yes. And they have huge warehouses full of, of servers, and they used to air condition them, and then they figured out that you really don't need to keep them that cool, just at a moderate temperature, and you have to figure out where the hot spots are and invent the hot spots. Yeah, and you know, spot spot cooling. Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, we, we don't have that problem, but mm -hmm. one of the issues there that we want to keep it in an enclosed room is because of the salt spray Absolutely. and the deterioration to the yeah. electronics mm -hmm. uh, goes very quickly. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, all the lights are LED, mm -hmm. um, uh, lots of insulation, lots of natural ventilation. Absolutely. In this yeah. particular project, um, we had a bigger problem controlling the winds versus mm -hmm. trying to enhance mm -hmm. wind mm -hmm. movement, where in most of our projects, we are always trying to enhance yep. wind movement, natural ventilation. Um, but in this project, it was controlling it. Mm -hmm. Um, in the great room, I, I don't think we have a photo of it um, here, but we have a 10-foot diameter uh, big-ass fan mm -hmm. that just slowly mm -hmm. moves air. Mm -hmm. When you put that thing on high, I, you know, you have to hold on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And very, the, the blades of, of those fans are incredibly well-tuned. Well and very quiet, mm -hmm. very quiet, very quiet for the size of that fan and the amount of air that it moves. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other, um, you know, deep green things that this project had on it uh, was the water. Water. We were, this is a wet area. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, so, so at certain wet, times yeah. a year, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it is wet. Interesting. Um, it gets about 35 inches a year, which is not that, that much, um, but enough. So, um, but there are, there were, there's firefighting demands. There's domestic water demands for potable mm -hmm. water for drinking, and then there's irrigation demands for the farm. 
So water was a big, big discussion. And how to handle it, how to catch it. The fire department is rather particular about this. You're keeping a certain reserve of water? Yeah, we yeah, had, yeah. since we had two buildings, um, we have about 15,000 gallons uh, for, uh, 7,500 for each, 15,000 mm -hmm, total. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have domestic and irrigation supply. Irrigation, too. We're, we're well, talking about a lot of water here. Well, in, uh, irrigation in terms of... Um, uh, when the farm needs it. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we used a number of uh, you know, kind of soft technologies to help drive water that's sheet flowing across the land into the ground oh, okay, and plant okay, bigger yeah. things along mm -hmm, these uh, mm -hmm. shelter belts, um, so to speak. Um, but, um, you know, and that works very well. And then all of the wastewater from the home goes into the garden around the house. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I'm sorry, the gray water, not gray the wastewater. Water. Yeah, the yeah. wastewater goes into a um, infiltration field. Mm -hmm. And above that, they plant what they call fodder plants, fast growing plants that they cut and they put around other plants to keep the weeds mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. the moisture in and things of mm -hmm. that nature. So it's really a, a integrated system. You know, the water that comes, falls on the land is collected and then we drink it and use it, and it goes back into the land. Um, it, it's really quite interesting, quite wow. nice. Um, yeah, we're about to wrap up. So what, what, what's the real big take? Oh, the, the energy use, the net energy use of, of this home. Well, it's, it's, it's well below zero. In, ooh, in the ooh, HERS ooh, rating, ooh, yeah. we actually got um, a negative number. Yeah. Well, and that part of that, I have to be uh, clear, is that we built the PV system is oversized for mm -hmm. the home right okay, now yeah. because yeah. they have plans to build other structures mm -hmm. within the mm -hmm. farm for the farm, like a farm manager's yeah. um, workers' homes and things like that. Um, but they're char currently they're charging uh, two electric vehicles, Ooh. one to drive on the road and one like a, uh, an electric um, uh, for utility farm, vehicle yeah. for in and around. Mm -hmm. um, electric appliances, electric uh, blowers, and electric everything. So they're, uh, yeah. they're I mean, it's a, an efficient home, but they, because of it's a, a working farm, they have a lot of demands for the electricity Absolutely. also. That is really a remarkable story. And on that cheery note, we're going to have to wrap up. Thank you so much, Matt Goike. You, you are leading the way. You're a pioneer. Thank you very in much. In this field, let's hope that more and more people follow your lead. Yeah.